Hi everyone, I'm Robin with Robin's Re3. As promised on my live on uh, Monday night when we used the wreath ring, I said I would do a short video on how to paint it. I'm using Waverly chalk paint. I'm using the thinnest, tiniest brush I have because there's like a little little indentation in here in each one of the letters. Now with that, you're going to treat that as a shelf and you're just going to glide along that shelf. Okay? Now it's best to do two coats, but you can see by using that smallest brush, all I do is glide along there. Let me kind of pull it in so you can see it. Maybe better than what, there we go. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm resting my thin paintbrush along that groove. I call it a shelf. It's just like a little, little shelf, okay? And you're just gliding your paintbrush along that shelf until you do all the sides of the letter. Now if you have a really thin paintbrush, this is going to go really easy for you. I would definitely advise painting the letters first and then going back over later when the letters are dry, going back over the outside, the top part. So all you're doing is you're just gliding your brush along that shelf. And it's easy to do it with it standing up because then you can see if you've missed any. Now I'm purposely and on accident <laughs> getting some paint outside on the base itself, the top layer. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a couple of times to fill in all your gaps. But say you just got sloppy, all right? And just kind of did your own thing, all right? Rounded the corner, got a little sloppy, got some on the top. And we got really a bunch on that top. Say you just got sloppy. Say you didn't have a big brush and you just got just sloppy, okay? Notice how I have some? The best bet is to have um, wipes, baby wipes on hand. And then all you're gonna do is run your finger around that edge and wipe it off. It's that simple. You may have to use a couple. Keep folding it over. Okay, because you don't want to keep wiping with the same part of the wipe because it's just going to smear more around. But my suggestion is Make sure you do the letters first. Let them dry. Then you can go back and you can work on this top layer. But see how that baby wipe just takes all that excess paint off? Now I have a little dot down in here I gotta get. There we go. All right, so that's all you're doing. Let's do another one. All right. See how I'm just using that shelf to kind of glide my paintbrush around? Stopping occasionally to add more paint. Load your brush with more. I'm going to get sloppy. 
because I want to get in that corner. You can do it gently, but sometimes for recording purposes, I kind of want to go a little faster so you can see what I'm doing. And then all you're going to want to do is tilt your your wreath base. We call it a wreath ring. Several angles so you can see if you got all in the cracks. Okay? Then it's just a baby wipe. Now if you were doing this all in white, you could just paint it all in white if you were doing it all in one color. But as you can see from my, um, the one I did on my Monday Night Live, this was painted black and the inside of the letters was painted white. But see how I got excellent coverage in there? All right, let's, let's keep going. And then what I'll do is I'll stop this recording and then I will go ahead after this is dry and show you how to paint the next coat. The coat that's going to go the next color is what I mean. See you're just you're just twisting your brush. See how I'm just turning the brush with my forefinger and my thumb? I'm going to get back here. I have a smaller paintbrush than this too, but I kind of like this brush because it comes to a point and I can load a bit of paint on there. I am an amateur at painting. It's something I've always done, but I've never been professionally taught. So this is how I would do it. If you have another idea, if you, if you have another technique, go ahead and use it. Whatever works for you. But I would invest in a decent brush. Walmart has some great brushes. Um, Amazon has great brushes. But I'm just resting my brush against the groove on the side of the letter and then twisting it with my forefinger And again, you might have to move it around a little bit or, or sideways to make sure you have coverage. Now I'm going to get a little messy there. This was one of the first ones we ran and this wood was not up to standards. So it is a little... Um, a little rough on the inside so sometimes you have to use a little pressure with your brush to get the paint where it has to go and that's just because this was a bad um, grade of wood we no longer use this wood we found an excellent source so we've been using that and it's perfect for staining or painting I got some over here. But I'm just gliding it along and twisting when needed. So that's why I've had to get a little messy with this one because I want all the coverage where it's supposed to be. There you go, we did three letters little bit in here. I'm 
There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. It's easy to work up against the side. And then if you want to do the flat inside part last. But use your groove to guide your paintbrush. Load it up and then put it right against that shelf. That's the easy way. but you need a narrow brush. The letters are the hardest part to this. The rest can go easy peasy. And the baby wipe is your best friend. It's going to help you cover up any mistakes on the top layer. See? And if you're using a darker color, you're not even going to see that if there is any residue left over, you're not going to see it. Look how easy that is. See how I'm just using that edge to glide my brush. Glob it up a little. So I want to get this really good up the side. There we go. Just keep folding because you're going to have paint residue on there and you don't want to smear it all around. bit in here. I missed. We're using a different bit now too and the bit with the good wood is really making it smooth on the inside of the letters. And it, it, it wasn't doing that before. a few pieces there. There we go. Alright. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish painting the rest of the letters and then I'm going to let it dry and then I will come back later and re and film the rest of it on how to paint around the letters. Okay. All right. I'll see you back soon. There we go. All right. So now we're going to go to a wider brush widthwise. But it's still narrow enough and it's still going to work well to get around our letters. So here we go. Again, I'm just using a, a chalk paint. All right. So, now how do we get a piece of. There we go. All right. So basically, what you're going to be doing is you're just going to be 
gliding along using your brush to do all the work. There. Then we're going to do this. Glide along to get a straight edge. You don't need a whole lot on your brush, but you want it to glide. Now, right here, I have a little bristle that's sticking out. We're just going to trim it because we don't want it leaving a little path somewhere. You'll see what you're going to be doing. You're going to be moving this around a lot because you don't want to put your wrist in the paint, but you want to come away from the letter. So you can glide along the top and then pull away from. And don't worry, this will dry even. <clears throat> I'm just using my brush to do all the work. And I'm going back to fill in. But you're always coming away from the letter unless you're gliding down the side. You want to have the right kind of brushes because that's going to give you your best look. Now what I probably should have done, I should have done these two pointed areas in the W first. So you glide and then you pull away. you get any paint in your letter, you can always go back later on and touch it up with white after it dries to cover over it. So I think I'm going to go in here. And then pull away. always best to work on the outside of the letter. I may be making it look a little too easy, but if you have the right brush, it will work for you. And if you're going to do a second coat of the um, black 
around the letters. You won't have to get this close. It'll actually be easier to do them the second time around. Because the second time around, you're just going to be filling in. Chuck paint is very forgiving. And I would let the top dry, and then I would do your sides. And then when the sides dry, then I would do your back. you sit here and try and play with it while everything's wet, number one, you're going to have paint all over you and you're going to get extra paint in places you don't want paint. So do it in stages. Do not try and do it all at once. It's all in how you position your brush. I hope that you all find this video helpful. And if you do, that you leave a thumbs up. I got a lot on my paintbrush, so I'm going to pull some of it off because I don't want it dripping over the side. There we go. I have some puddling in there, so I'm just trying to smooth it out a little. Like I said at the beginning, your best bet is to do the inside of your letters first. If you're staining it, do the you know do the whole top. Staining is is easier to do than painting. Any wood stain will do. find painting to be very relaxful, relaxing. Now with this letter I'm going to do the inside first. I'm just trying to position my paintbrush. At trying, well, actually trying to keep my hand away from any other painted areas. So that's why I'm using the wreath ring. I'm just moving it around so I get the best angle so I don't get any paint anywhere else.
And in between coats, you can always put your paintbrush in a Ziploc bag so you don't have to keep washing it. it if it's in a Ziploc bag, it'll stay wet. since you're on my YouTube channel go ahead and hit the bell to just subscribe we have a lot of new products coming out and I think you would really want to see those new items and if you're subscribed you'll know when I go live. Oops, I backed myself into a corner here. Now let's go this way. I'm going to go all the way to E so you can, you got a lot of practice. You can see it and you can practice along with me. We do not sell these painted because of the fact that not everybody wants the same color and I would have to carry a lot of colors to suit everybody's needs. So, and most people that don't want to paint, go ahead and stain. don't want to paint, you could also go ahead and order this without the word welcome on it. And if you have a Cricut, you could put your word on it. So you can buy it without any words or stars. This one does not have stars. This one is actually going to go to Lori and hardworking mom. I want to challenge her with a black wreath base and see what she comes up with. This is a color that's really good for all year long. You could stick with any color, but I think this is a pretty Pretty um, neutral color. It would go for any holiday. I could see this 
Halloween. I could see it at Christmas. I could see it any holiday. Summer with bees. It comes with ten, five sets of holes. Two, four, six, eight, and that one, ten. I suggest you zip tie your bundles first and then zip tie them to the wreath base. That way when you take them out you can just store what you want in a shoebox and then make a new one for the next holiday. chalk paint, they tell you to do this in all directions. That's how you're supposed to paint with chalk paint. But that's when you don't have an excellent finished product. Like chalk paint is mostly used for covering old furniture. So, some surfaces are uneven. Come on, right there. You could even, if you wanted, take a paint marker and outline your letters. And then paint up to the outline. So I will let this dry for a couple hours and then I will go back and I will do inside and the outside. And for that I would put this up on, I'm just looking for any kind of spots that weren't totally covered, there we go. Um, you could use I have these, but you can use one of these from the dollar store. It's a baking uh, rack, and I would highly recommend using that to let your your wreath sit up and dry. There you go. If you have any questions at any time, don't hesitate to message me. These are the paint markers I was talking about. Um, don't know where the lid is. Oh, Posca markers. They sell them on um, Amazon. But you could outline the letters with this and then go back and paint if you wanted. But I think with this paintbrush you'll get an, a more even coat. I just go back and look for any uneven areas that just need a touch up. Okay. Alright. I thank you and I will leave a link in the comments if you want to purchase one of our birch plywood wreath rings. Um, all you have to do is go to my Etsy shop. Alright, have a great night. Thank you.